cast away. The starved eye devours the seascape for the morsel of a sail. The horizon threads it infinitely. Action is frenzy. I lie sailing the ribbed shadow of a palm, afraid lest my own footprints multiply. Blowing sand, thin as smoke, bored, shifts its dunes. The surf tires of its castles like a child. The salt green vine with yellow trumpet flower, a net, inches on nothing. Nothing, the rage with which the sandfly's head is filled. Pleasures of an old man. Morning, contemplative evacuation, considering the dried leaf, nature's plan. In the sun, the dog's feces, crusts, whitens like coral. We end in earth, from earth began, in our own entrails, Genesis. If I listen, I can hear the polyp build, the silence thwanged by two waves of the sea. Cracking a sea louse, I make thunder split. Godlike, annihilating Godhead, art and self, I abandon dead metaphors like the almond's leaf-shaped heart, the ripe brain rotting like a golden nut, hatching its babble of sea lice, sand fly and maggot, that green wine bottle's gospel choked with sand, labelled a wrecked ship, gnarled seaward clenched and nailed like a man's hand. The Swamp Gnawing the highway's edges, a black mouth cries quietly, Home, come home. Below its viscous breath, the very word growth grows fungi, rot, white speckling its root. More dreaded than canebrake, quarry, or sun-struck gully bed, its horror held Hemingway's hero rooted to fast, clear shallows. It begins nothing. Limbo of cracker convicts, negroes, its black mood, each sunset takes a smear of your life's blood. Fearful, original sinuosity. Each mangrove sapling, serpent-like, its roots obscene as a six-fingered hand, conceals within its clutch the moss-backed toad, toadstools, the potent ginger lily, petals of blood, the speckled vulva of the tiger orchid, outlandish phalloi that haunt the travellers of its one road, or deep, deeper than sleep, like death, too rich in its decrescence, too close of breath. In the fast-filling night, note how the last bird drinks darkness with its throat, how the wild saplings slip swiftly in darkness, go black with widening amnesia, take the edge of nothing to them slowly, Merge limb, tongue, and sinew into a knot like chaos, like the road ahead. Tarpon At Cedras, thudding the dead sand in spasms, the tarpon gaped with a gold eye, drowned thickly, thrashing with brute pain this sea I breathe. Stilled, its bulk screwed to the eye's lens, slowly sought design. It dried like silk, leisurely, altered to lead. The belly, leprous, silver, bulged like a coal shanker for the blade. Suddenly it shuddered in immense doubt, but the old jaw gibbering divulged nothing but some new filaments of blood. For every bloody stroke with which a frenzied fisherman struck its head, my young son shook his head. Could I have called out not to look simply at the one world we shared? Dead and examined in detail, a tarpon's bulk grows beautiful. Bronze with a brass green mold, the scales age like a corslet of old coins. 
A net of tarnished silver joins the back's deep sea blue to the tail's wedged tapering Y. Set in a stone, triangular skull, ringing with gold, the open eye is simply, tiringly there. A shape so simple, like a cross, a child could draw it in the air. A tarpon scale, its skin's flake, washed at the sea's edge and held against the light, looks just like what the grinning fisherman said it would. Dense as frost glass, but delicate, etched by a diamond, it showed a child's drawing of a ship, the sail's twin triangles, a mast. Can all complexities of shape, all bulk, terror and fury fit in a design so innocent that through opaque phantasmal mist, moving but motionlessly, it sails where the imagination sent. Missing the Sea Something removed roars in the airs of this house, hangs its drapes windless, stuns mirrors till reflections lack substance. Some sound like the gnashing of windmills ground to a dead halt, a deafening absence, a blow. It hoops this valley, weighs this mountain, a stranger's gesture, pushes this pencil through a clear nothing now, freights cupboards with silence, folds sour laundry like the clothes of the dead left exactly as the dead behaved by the beloved, incredulous, expecting occupancy. Next poem is a description of the place where I live, um, Trinidad. Nights in the gardens of Port of Spain. Night, the black summer, simplifies her smells into a village. She assumes the impenetrable musk of the negro, grows secret as sweat, her alleys odorous with shucked oyster shells, coals of gold oranges, braziers of melon. Commerce and tambourines increase her heat. Hellfire or the whorehouse. Crossing Park Street, a surf of sailors' faces, crests, is gone with the sea's phosphorescence. The boîte de nuit tinkle like fireflies in her thick hair. Blinded by headlamps, deaf to taxi klaxons, she lifts her face from the cheap pitch oil flare towards white stars like cities, flashing neon, burning to be the bitch she must become. As daylight breaks, the coolie turns his tumbril of hacked, beheaded coconuts towards home. <clears throat> the Glory Trumpeter Old Eddie's face, wrinkled with river lights, looked like a Mississippi man's. The eyes, derisive and avuncular at once, swiveling, fixed me. They'd seen too many wakes, too many cat-house nights. The bony, idle fingers and the valves of his knee-cradled horn could tear through Georgia on my mind or Jesus saves with the same fury of indifference, if what propelled such frenzy was despair. Now as the eye sealed in the ashen flesh, and Eddie, like a deacon at his prayer, rose, tilting the bright horn. I saw a flash of gulls and pigeons from the dunes of coal near my grandmother's barracks on the wharves. I saw the sallow faces of those men who sighed as if they spoke into their graves about the Negro in America. That was when the Sunday comics, sprawled out on her floor, sent from the States, had a particular odor, a smell of money mingled with man's sweat. And yet, if Eddie's features held our fate, secure in childhood, I did not know then a Jesus ragtime or gut bucket blues to the bowed heads of lean, compliant men back from the States in their funereal surge, black, rusty Homburgs and limp waiters' ties, 
with honey accents and loud colored eyes, was Joshua's ram's horn wailing for the Jews of patient bitterness or bitter siege? Now it was that, as Eddie turned his back on our young crowd outfetting swilling liquor, and blue eyes closed, one foot up out to sea, his horn aimed at those cities of the Gulf, Mobile and Galveston, and sweetly meted the horn of plenty through a bitter cup, in lonely exaltation, blaming me for all whom race and exile have defeated, for my own uncle in America, that living there I never could look up. Coral. This coral's shape echoes the hand it hollowed. Its immediate absence is heavy as pumice, as your breast in my cupped palm. Sea cold, its nipple rasps like sand, its pores like yours shone with salt sweat. Bodies in absence displace their weight, and your smooth body, like none other, creates an exact absence like this stone set on a table with a whitening rack of souvenirs. It dares my hand to claim what lovers' hands have never known, the nature of the body of another. This is a poem um, based on the legend of Crusoe on an island of Tobago, which is one quite near to Trinidad. Crusoe's Island. The chapel's cowbell, like God's anvil, hammers ocean to a blinding shield. Fired, the sea grapes slowly yield bronze plates to the metallic heat. Red corrugated iron roofs roar in the sun. The wiry, ribbed air above earth's open kiln writhes like a vision of hell, but nearer, nearer. Below the simple plaid of Scarborough is spread to a blue, perfect sky, our dome of hedonist philosophy. Bethel and Canaan's heart open to hymn and psalm. I labor at God's gift. My father, God, is dead. Past thirty now I know to love the self is dread of being swallowed by the blue of heaven overhead or rougher blue below. Each lesion of the brain from art or alcohol flashes this fear by day, as startling as his shadow grows to the castaway. Upon this rock the bearded hermit built his Eden, goats, corn crop, fort, parasol, garden, Bible for Sabbath, all the joys but one which sent him howling for a human voice. Exiled in Eden by the sun, the rotting nut, bold in the surf, became his own brain, rotting from the guilt of heaven without his kind. Crazed by such paradisal calm, the spinal shadow of a palm built keel and gunwale in his mind. The second Adam, since the fall, his germinal corruption held the seed of that congenital heresy that men fail according to their creed. Craftsman and cast away all heaven in his head, he saw his shadow pray not for God's love, but human love instead. We came here for the cure of quiet in the Welk's center, from the fierce sudden quarrel, from kitchens where the mind like bread disintegrates in water, to let a salt sun score the brain as harsh as coral, to bathe like stones in wind, to be like beast or natural object, pure. That fabled occupational compassion supposedly inherited with the gift of poetry had fed with hermit's thrift on faith, shifted its trust to corners, hoarded its mania like bread, its brain a white nocturnal bloom, that in a drunken, moonlit room saw my son's head swaddled in sheets like a lopped nut, lolling in foam. O oh, love, we die alone. 
I am born by the bell, backward to boyhood, to the grey wood spire, harvest, and marigold, to all whom a cruel, just God could gather to his blue breast, his bared a folding cloud, as he gathered my father. Irresolute and proud, I can never go back. I have lost sight of hell, of heaven, of human will. My skill is not enough. I am struck by the bell to the root. Crazed by a racking sun, I stand at my life's noon. On parched, delirious sand, my shadow lengthens. Art is profane and pagan. The most it has revealed is what a crippled Vulcan beat on Achilles' shield. By these blue, changing graves, fanned by the furnace blast of heaven, may the mind catch fire till it cleaves its mould of clay at last. Now Friday's progeny, the brood of Crusoe's slave, black little girls in pink, organdy, crinolines, walk in an air of glory beside a breaking wave. Below their feet the surf hisses like tambourines. At dusk, when they return for vespers, every dress, touched by the sun, will burn a seraphs and angels, and nothing I can learn from art or loneliness can bless them as the bell's transfixing tongue can bless. A letter from Brooklyn. An old lady writes me in a spidery style, each character trembling, and I see a veined hand, pellucid as paper, traveling on a skein of such frail thoughts, its thread is often broken, or else the filament from which a phrase is hung dims to my sense, but caught it shines like steel as touch a line and the whole web will feel. She describes my father, yet I forget her face more easily than my father's yearly dying. Of her I remember small buttoned boots and the place she kept in our wooden church on those Sundays whenever her strength allowed. Gray-haired, thin voice, perpetually bowed. I am Mabel Rollins, she writes, and know both your parents. He is dead, Miss Rollins, but God bless your tents. Your father was a dutiful, honest, faithful, and useful person. For such plain praise, what fame is recompense? A horn painter, he painted delicately on horn. He used to sit around the table and paint pictures. The peace of God needs nothing to adorn it, not glory, no ambition. He is twenty-eight years buried, she writes. He was called home, and is, I am sure, doing greater work. The strength of one frail hand in a dim room somewhere in Brooklyn, patient and assured, restores my sacred duty to the word. Home, home she can write, with such short time to live, alone as she spins the blessings of her years, not withered of beauty if she can bring such tears, nor withdrawn from the world that breaks its lovers so. Heaven is to her the place where painters go, all who bring beauty on frail shell or horn. There was all made, thence there looks mundi drawn, drawn, drawn till the thread is resilient steel, lost though it seems in darkening periods, there they return to do work that is God's. So this old lady writes, and again I believe it, I believe it all, and for no man's death I grieve. This is a poem based on a painting by Rembrandt of his son, The Polish Rider. The grey horse, death, in profile, bears the young Titus to dark woods by the dying coal of day. 
The father, with worn vision, portrays the son like Dura's knight astride a Rosinante. The horse disturbs more than the youth delights us. The warrior turns his sure gaze for a second. Assurance looks its father in the eye. The inherited bony hack heads accurately towards the symbolic forests that have beckoned such knights squired by the scyther where to lie. But skill dispassionately praises the rider. Despair details the grey cadaverous steed. The immortal image holds its murderer in a clear gaze for the next age to read. Islands Merely to name them is the prose of diarists, to make you a name for readers who, like travellers, praise their beds and beaches as the same. But islands can only exist if we have loved in them. I seek as climate seeks its style to write verse crisp as sand, clear as sunlight, cold as the curled wave, ordinary as a tumbler of island water. Yet, like a diarist, thereafter I savour their salt-haunted rooms, your body stirring the creased sea of crumpled sheets, whose mirrors lose our huddled, sleeping images like words which love had hoped to use, erased with the surf's pages. So like a diarist in sand I mark the peace with which you graced particular islands, descending a narrow stair to light the lamps against the night surf's noises, shielding a leaping mantle with one hand, or simply scaling fish for supper, onions, jackfish, bread, red snapper, and on each kiss, kiss and on each kiss the harsh sea taste, and how by moonlight you were made to study most the surf's unyielding patience, though it seems a waste. In the next poem, I've tried to combine all the various cultural and historical elements that have gone into making West in the West Indian society which includes um, the Greek, uh, European, that is, civilization symbolized by the sea, and African symbolized by the river. Origins. The flowering breaker detonates its surf. White bees hiss in the coral skull. Nameless, I came among olives of algae, fetus of plankton, I remember nothing. Clouds, log of colon, I learnt your annals of ocean, of Hector, bridler of horses, Achilles, Aeneas, Ulysses. But of that fine race of people which came off the mainland to greet Cristobal as he rounded Icacos, blank pages turn in the wind. They possessed, by Bulbrook, no knowledge whatever of metals, not even of gold. They recognized the seasons, the first risings of the Pleiades, by which signs they cultivate, assisted by magic. Primitive minds cannot grasp infinity. Nuage, nuage in lazy volumes rolled, swallowed in the surf of changing cumulus, their skulls of crackling shells crunched underfoot, now, when my mind would pierce infinity, a gap in history closes like a cloud. Memory in cerecloth and coils its ode balmed in an amber childhood. In my warm malarial bush bath, the wet leaves leached to my flesh. An infant Moses, I dreamed of dying. I saw paradise as columns of lilies and wheat-headed angels. Between the Greek and African pantheon, lost animist, I rechristened trees. Caduceus of Hermes, the constrictor round the mangrove. Dorad, their golden mythological dolphin, leapt flaking light as once for Orion, for the broken archipelago of wave-browed gods. Now the Sibyl I honor, mother of memory, 
bears in her black hand a white frangipani with berries of blood. She gibbers with the cries of the Guinean Odyssey. These islands have drifted from anchorage, like gommiers loosened from Guinea, far from the childhood of rivers. O clear brown tongue of the sun-warmed, sun-wooded trumasse of laundresses and old leaves, and winds that buried their old songs in archives of bamboo and wild plantain, their white sails bleached and beaten on dry stone, the handkerchiefs of adieu and babai. O sea, leaving your villages of cracked mud and tin, your chorus of bearded corn in tragic fields, your children like black rocks of petrified beginnings in whose pot-bellied drought the hookworm boils, cherubim of glaucoma and gonorrhea, white cemeteries of shells beside the sea's cracked cobalt, poinsettia bleeding at your praying stations, shadowy with croton and with glory cedar, whose gods of cracked canoes hold the dead hopes of larvae, live middens heaped by the infecting river, Fets of a childhood brain, sieved with sea noise and river murmur. Ah, mon enfance. Ah, mon enfance. Smothered in the cotton clouds of illness. Cocooned in sinuous odors of the censer. Buried in bells. Bathed in the alcohol of lime and yellow flowers. Voyaging like colon on starched linen seas. That watched the river's snakes writhe on the ceiling that knew the forgotten taste of river water, the odor of fresh bread and the mother's skin, that knew its own skin slowly, amber, then excrement, then bronze, that fed the ibo fifes and drums of Christmas, the broken egg in which it sailed at Easter, festivals, processions, voyages of the grave, and the odor of rivers in unopened cupboards trace of our exodus across its desert, erased by the salt winds. The snake spirit dies, writhing horizon. Beetles lift the dead elephant into the jaws of the forest. Death of old gods in the ashes of their eyes. The plunging throats of porpoises simulating O sea the retching hulks of caravels stitching two worlds like the whir of my mother's machine in a Sabbath bedroom, like needles of cicadas stitching the afternoon shroud, death of old gods in the river snakes dried from the ceiling, Yahweh and Zeus rise from the foam's bed at daybreak. The mind among Sirach seeks its mythopoeic coast, seeks like the polyp to take root in itself, here, in the rattle of receding shoal, among these shallows, I seek my own name and a man. As the crab's claws move backwards through the surf, blind memory grips the putrefying flesh. Was it not then we asked for a new song, as Colon's vision gripped the buried branch, for the names of bees in the surf of white frangipani, with hard teeth breaking the bitter almonds of consonants, shaping new labials to the curl of the wave, christening the pomegranate with a careful tongue, pom de citer, bitter citerian apple, and God's eye glazed by an indifferent blue. We have learnt the alphabet of alkali and aloe and seeds of islands dispersed by the winds. We have washed out with salt the sweet faded savour of rivers, and in the honeycombs of skulls the bees built a new song, and we have eaten of their bitter olive. But now twin soul, spirit of river, spirit of sea, turn from the long interior rivers, their somnolence, brown studies, their long colonial languor, their old Egyptian sickness, the imitation of tea color, their tongues that lick the feet of Buana and Saib, their rage for funeral pyres of children's flesh, the sinuousness that shaped the original snake. The surf has raised that memory from our speech, and a single raindrop irrigates the tongue. The sea waits for him like Penelope's spindle, raveling, unraveling its foam, whose eyes bring the rain from far countries, 
the salt rain that hazes horizons and races, who crouched by our beach fires, his face cracked by deserts, remembering monarchs, asks us for water, fetched in the fragment of an earthen cruise, and extinguishes Troy in a hissing of ashes, in a turmoil of cloud. Clouds, vigorous exhalations of wet earth, in men and in beasts, the nostrils exulting in rain scent, uncoiling like mist the wound of the jungle. We praise those whose back on hillsides buckles on the wind to sow the grain of guinea in the mouths of the dead, who, hurling their bone-needled nets over the cave mouth, harvest ancestral voices from its surf, who, lacking knowledge of metals, primarily of gold, still gather the coinage of cowries, simple numismatists, who kneel in the open sarcophagi of cocoa to hallow the excrement of our martyrdom and fear, whose sweat, touching earth, multiplies in crystals of sugar, those who conceive the birth of white cities in a raindrop and the annihilation of races in a prism of the dew.